Hey everyone, my name is Nikhil. So a couple of days back, we uploaded a video on the Node.js CRUD using the MySQL, Express and the Docker. And then we posted out that we're gonna bring a new video on the caching, right? So today is the time for that. So welcome to the Redis course. In this course, you will learn about the Redis. So Redis is an in-memory database which is used for storing the data in memory or for caching the data. So first of all, we'll be discussing that why exactly do we need the Redis. We will discuss the problem and then I will show you the example as well. So what exactly is that problem? And then what we gonna do? Then we will discuss about the Redis that what exactly is the Redis. We will discuss the use cases of the Redis. And after that, we are gonna implement the practical Redis. We are gonna implement the use cases of the Redis. We will learn about the practical Redis. We'll implement each one of use case of the Redis with using the Redis CLI. And then we won't stop there again. Then we are gonna integrate the Redis with the Node.js API. Right? So we'll be using the Node.js API which we built in our last video. So are you excited for Redis course? Yeah, well, you should be. So let's get started. Hey everyone. So welcome to the Redis crash course. So we need to understand that what exactly is Redis to work with the Redis. So Redis is the in-memory data store and that's it. So Redis provides you various ways to store your data inside the memory of your system. So it utilizes your system's RAM for storing the data because the RAMs are very fast to grab and retrieve some data with that. So that's why the Redis uses that. So for working with the Redis, first we need to understand that why do we need the Redis? Right? Why do we need another tool working with the backend systems? What exactly is the need for that? So for that, I want to show you something. So I've created two uh, containers inside the Docker. First one is the Redis itself. Then second one is the SQL DB. And I'm taking the reference from our previous video, right? I'm taking the reference from our previous video. So our previous video was on the Node.js REST API with using the MySQL and the Docker, right? So we'll be taking the reference from this video, right? So let's get started with that. So what I'm gonna do here, I need to again open the Visual Studio code and here let's move on and just give me a second so here what we need to do we can move on to crud and we can open the development server with using the npm run dev you can see the application is same as per the previous code but i have done slight modifications to that if you move on to index.js you can see now instead of directly connecting to database and then initializing the application server now we are also connecting to the redis before opening the application server at a specific port so inside the redis what are we doing so we are just getting some value from the redis and then we are setting the value and that's it and one major change added here inside the handlers while getting a specific product so you can see while getting a specific product, first I'm checking it inside the Redis. So if that product exists inside the Redis memory, then we do not need to communicate with the database. Then we can just directly send the data right to the user, to the client. But if we don't have this value inside the Redis, then what are we doing? So we are grabbing the product details cons product equals to await find by id of the specific product then we are setting the value to the redis as well right so that's only modification i did inside the handlers so what i'm gonna show you is i'm gonna open the postman tool for testing this api request and here what i'm gonna do i'm gonna grab a product with id equals to two right i'm gonna grab this product so here let's get started with that let's close that let's close all of the files over there right so i need the product which have the id equals to two and this product is already available inside my database so i do not need to worry on that 
So let's get started. So if I hit on send, you can see now we are successfully retrieving the record, right? Now we are successfully retrieving the record of that specific product. And in there, we are having the product with the ID 2, the title, description and the price. So all these details are perfectly correct right all these details are correct and here as well you can see we do not have any event or anything with the server but one major thing which happened you can see if you see the timing with that so the status is 200 which is okay and the time it took is 28 milliseconds right it took around 28 milliseconds you can see what we did here so the request goes to our server then the server connects to the docker image so it connects to the docker container sorry and then it utilizes the data inside the mysql db from the volumes then we get back to this application then we have the response so it took around 28 milliseconds that's very shorter time right that's time is very short but what if this record is already available inside the redis memory so if we see the handler file again, the handlers file, so we are setting the product as well. So now the product has already been set inside the Redis and now we need to verify that how and how fast the Redis can process the data. So are you excited? Yes, I am. So let's move on. So now you can see now the time was 28 milliseconds. So we can record this time as well with the 28. Right, with the 28, we can record this. Now, if we hit on send, you can see a huge thing happened. So we have a same response. We don't have anything to worry. We have the similar response. But the thing that we have is we just took around nine milliseconds, right? We only took nine milliseconds. You can see that's huge. So you can see 28 and nine. So if we see how much percent the red is fast fast, so we can just have like the nine, sorry, we can have the nine. Then we can just have something like if we need to calculate the percentage for that, we can have the nine divide by we can have the 28 milliseconds, right? And then we can multiply that with the hundred and then we can minus that with the hundred percent. You can see now we have 67% faster record with the red is so that is huge man that is huge and if you can see if we again hit on send you can see now it took just around six milliseconds five milliseconds four milliseconds so the average is somewhat some uh some similar to five something right so you can see again with the 28 right so we can just have the five divided by 28 then we can just have into the 100 like that you can see minus 100 with that you can see 82 percent faster response with the redis so that is huge because now we are not communicating with the database we are directly communicating with the memory of our system so you can see the second time we made the request so the value existed inside the redis memory with this data so that is the data, right? That is the data. So you can see that's huge. And if we do it again, if we see that example again, suppose we grab a product with the ID of the five. So you can see initially if it on send, you can see it took around 11 milliseconds, right? It took around 11 milliseconds. But what if we again send this request? You can see now we have the eight, then we have the four. So the average is four milliseconds. So you can see more than 60, 70% faster the redis gives you the response so redis gives you the response more than 70 percent fast so that's why we use the redis so now you got the equation that why we need the redis so let's visually see that example so suppose the apple launches a new iphone that is 16 pro right so we send so suppose there are millions of users. So one user sent a request to the Amazon server and then the Amazon server retrieves the record from the database and then it gives you the response. So it takes around 40 milliseconds, for example, right? Suppose it takes around 40 milliseconds and you can see if there are millions of users who are communicating for that iPhone 16 Pro, right? So Amazon can also cache that result like we did 
So we cached this result inside the memory of our system. And that's why you can see that's why it was very fast. So you can see the iPhone 16 Pro can be accessed by millions of users. So every time we do not need to communicate with the database. So instead, we can communicate directly to the Redis and we can check if the value exists inside the Redis, then we do not need to communicate with the DB unless the description or anything about this iPhone changes. So that's point to note. So if your data is same, suppose your data needs to be same for around next two, three, four days, next one week. So the Redis is a great solution for that. You can see it will take somewhere around eight milliseconds and around 40 milliseconds for one iPhone, right? So you can see there is a huge difference for that. So that is the main use case of the Redis, which is caching the data. So why we need to use Redis? So for caching, for sessions and for pub sub messaging as well. Caching, we already saw that example and we can also use some cache data within the sessions of the user. Suppose the user is making one transaction. Suppose the user is buying a ticket right of any IPL match or anything. So the user needs to complete the transactions for that. So we can store the session data like the user has checked out. The user is currently processing the payment. The user's payment has completed. Now we are redirecting. So there are multiple steps for that. So we can use the sessions like sessions are the temporary data that can be used with the Redis. Then again, we can have the pub sub messaging as well. Suppose we can have the messaging support, like suppose we just subscribe for a particular channel, then that channel publishes particular text messages or audio messages, something like that. So we can listen to that. So Redis has an additional feature with using the pub sub messaging as well. So like the Apache Kafka does. So it is similar to that. So that's why the Redis can be used. And this was a great example with using the Node.js with that. And now I will move on to the Node.js tutorial as well with the Redis. But before that, we need to move on and we need to learn that what are the things that the Redis can do for us. So now we have pretty good explanations with the Redis that why exactly do we need the Redis, right? And now we'll move ahead. Now we'll move one step forward and now we will just learn that how we can use the Redis. So this step, in this step, what we gonna do? So we need to install the Redis inside our system and we can communicate with the Redis without any programming language, without any framework. We'll just directly dive into the native Redis and we will see how the Redis will work. Right, we'll use the features of the Redis. There are a lot of features of the Redis that we're gonna use. So let's get started with that. Because if you will just directly integrate the Redis with Node.js, Python, Golang or anything, so you won't get the internal details that how does that, how you can just work directly with using the Redis. Yes, there are a lot of third party tools and libraries available, but suppose you are stuck inside a production code and you want or you want to troubleshoot with the data of the Redis. So at that step, you might need the internal knowledge and internal CLI tools of the Redis to communicate with it directly because you cannot deploy another application into the cloud. Right. So that's why we should have the information at the root level. So that's why we should have the information at the root level that how we can communicate with the Redis using the Redis CLI, right? So without wasting much time, let's jump into that. And now we will see that how we can connect to the Redis. Yeah, it's very simple. If you are on the Linux, if you are on the MacBook, Mac OS, it would be pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You can just move on to official website of the Redis. You can install or you can install via command line tools of the Linux or with the MacBook as well. But with the Windows, there is no official setup with the Redis. So there is also a GitHub repository available for downloading the Redis. So it works pretty fine. But if you want 
to work with the json data then that library might not be the perfect fit for you so you might need to use the redis inside the docker image because modern applications uses the docker for deploying all of these services and all these details right so let's move on so currently i am on the windows i'll be using the docker and even if you are on the linux even if you are on the macbook and i would suggest you to use the docker image because nowadays we deploy the applications on the aws using the docker so we might not just always install on the aws we have the azure as well we have another tools as well where we can deploy these applications but mainly nowadays the focus directly on the docker and kubernetes for that right so without just going on into the details of the cloud services and all let's move on to the docker internal docker internal means like we can use our own system docker without using any cloud docker so let's get started with that so what we gonna do so i'm so sorry i'll be sharing you some details i'll be sharing you this file right so this file contains the crucial information with the redis so i'll be sharing you the features of the redis as well so there are a lot of features which we will see so first what do you want to do so we need to move on to redis so here what we gonna do here so we need to just move on to the redis sorry that's a radius we need to move on to redis so you can see that's the official website of the redis you can move on to downloads you can just download according to that right and then what we want to do so we'll be using the docker image so what we're gonna do we can just search for the redis docker like that so that is the official redis image with the redis that is the official image but as you know earlier that i showed you the example of the json right i showed you the example that how we can use the json data with using the redis this package of the redis is only used to store the string values only used to store the key value pairs of the string data functions and all these things so if we want to work with the redis json then what we're gonna do so we can just use another docker image which is the redis stack something like that we have the redis stack docker so that is the redis stack so this image inside this you can see it is also verified this image also uses the redis internally but it adds the wrapper of working with the json data right so it internally just so this image also includes the official redis package but it also includes a lot more things like working with the json data right so we'll be using this image directly right we'll be using this image so we can move on to the latest tag and we can learn about that as well that is the latest tag so that's it so we'll be using this image and it would be a great thing right it would be a great thing and you can learn about the details over there as well right you can move on to details and you can just search whatever you want you can learn whatever you want everything is available on internet right and you can see you can connect to the redis server using the redis cli as well so we also be needing the redis cli of the docker image so there's also cli application with using the redis it is also available right it's also available on docker so here is the command for that so we'll be using the redis cli image for that so let's jump into that i'll be opening the powershell of the windows so that is not great but it works pretty fine so here what we gonna do so first we wanna start a redis container so we can just copy this command like what are we doing so we are having the docker run we are providing the name for this container as the redis as the redis container the short form of the container then we are port mapping the redis image to our system port like that's the internal port and that's the external port of our system then you can see now we'll be having the detach mode so that it doesn't take the complete like it doesn't take the control from a terminal and another thing that you can add here you can add the rm as well so that once we just delete this image once we remove this container so that uh, this container should also be removed so we can use that so what we gonna do we can copy and we can paste it out here and that would be very simple thing so once we hit on that you can see i think something is wrong 
endpoint redis container maybe something is wrong if we move on to docker here if we move on to containers you can see these servers are already running so we can delete them and we can try them again so if we remove that and if we paste it out you can see now this container is there and everything seems to be working perfectly fine right that's great you can see now the redis container is working and that's it everything is working perfectly fine now what we're gonna do is the next step that would be very very easy so now we can again move on to this file i think we can close other tabs and things as well but i think we'll be needing them so we can remove this we can also remove this or we can move on into that and you can see now you can see here it uses another thing which is the redis json here we have the redis json and this is very important when working with the json data with using the redis json it uses something called rejson if you search for the rejson you will get the details here we have the rejson which is like the json module for working with the redis so that is the redis so that's it for now now what we're gonna do you can see now it is ready to accept the connections of the tcp connections so let's make the tcp connection to that so what we're gonna do here now our docker like now our container is ready now we can move on into this file we can just use this we'll be having the docker execute so we'll directly execute a command within the docker and dash it means the interactive mode means we can interact with the docker container directly inside any terminal you can use here as well you can use there as well so that's up to you so with using the exact execute and interactive mode we can interact with the docker container directly we do not need to move on to the docker and just log in and all these details we can directly use that with any terminal so we can copy and we can paste it out here so we have the docker execute dash it flag we have the redis container and the redis cli for that and we can hit enter and once you hit enter you can see now you are connected to the port of 127.0.0.1 and the exposed port in a system is 6379 that's great excellent you can see now we are interacting with the docker that's great right so now we have achieved first step now you can see now we are connected to the redis now we can directly work with the redis very very simple let's close this and let's move on into that and you can see here now sorry now we have these usages of the redis so there are majorly six usages of the redis which we can use and you can see these are the usages which makes the redis the most preferred cache system and in memory storage system as well so you can see that's how we can use the redis right so these are the usages of the redis that we will see one by one so let's move on to very first usage right the in memory data store so in memory data store means we can set and we can get some details from the redis right we can set and we can get some details it means suppose we use here the set then you can see there are the intelligence auto completion as well so it means now we can use the set with using the key with using the value so suppose we have the key suppose the key is my name suppose my name something like that right and then we can define a value for that my name value could be i can give the value as nikhil because nikhil is my name i can give it my value so if we hit enter if we just skip all these auto completion checks we'll see that in a moment but if we skip that and if we just directly use the set with that if we hit enter you can see now what we will see we'll see the you can see now we have the acknowledgement from the redis which is the okay it means everything is working perfectly fine now we are getting the so you can see now we are setting the details of the nickel but how we can get the details so you can see it is also present inside this file set a key value po and get the value associated with that key very simple with using the get right so we just need to use the get then you can define the name which is my name something like that and once you hit you can see now we saw this detail right 
So we were setting the details of the my name and you can see once we get the detail of the my name. So here we have the acknowledgement with the answer of the Redux. That's pretty great, right? That sounds interesting and that's great. And now we'll set a key value pair with using the other options as well. So let's get started with that. So suppose I add a value, suppose I add the set statement over there. And again, the key could be again, any name like that could be the, we can have the product and the value could be, suppose we can have, suppose a camera, right? And now we have two options, right? So at this place, now we want to provide something. So NX means like we only want to set the value if the value of the, like if the value of this key does not exist. So make a note for that. So NX means if it does not exist, then only set the value for the product and the value would be the camera. If this key does not exist, then only set a new key and double X means value to be set only when the key exists. Right? Now you got the point. So set product. The key is the product. The value is the camera. And it means if the value does not exist, then only set a new key with the product and the value with the camera. But if we are using the double X option, it means if we already have the key of the product, then only you need to set the value. It means updating the key, right? Make a note for that. So in this case, we'll be using the NX, right? We'll be using the NX, very simple. Now the get means when we set this value, right? When we set this value of the product and we, you can see when we set this value of this key product and the value would be the camera, suppose we want to grab this value as well, right? If we are setting the key of the product, the value would be the camera. If you want to get the value in return, suppose like this. So if you want to get the value inside the acknowledgement, then we use the get. It means if we use the get, it means now once we set this value, then we'll be just getting this value as well. We'll be getting the newly set value. Now we have the EX and we have the PX and we already have something as well, which is EX say something like that. Now it also means something. It is also there for a reason. Now the EX means we need to set the expiration time in seconds, right? Expiration means we need to set the expiration. So after how much time this key should expire. So we have the EX for having the key for having the expiry date for the key, but only with the seconds. And if we are using the PX, it means we'll be using the milliseconds, right? There's a difference. EX means expiry should be there within specified amount of seconds. And PX means the key should expire after specified amount of milliseconds, right? And then if we suppose set here, uh, suppose if we set here something like uh, EX and that could be the seconds of suppose we want to have around 100 seconds, then this key should expire. Then what we want to do now, you can see that's it for now, right? That is the complete set statement for now. And if we just hit enter, if we hit enter, you can see now we are getting the nil over there. So we made a mistake because uh, we had one more space between them. So make sure we don't have much spaces. You can see now you can see we are having a set product of the camera because now I removed the space set product set key equals to product the value equals to camera and we have the NX. It means if the key does not exist, then only set that then we have the get. So we get the value of the newly added key. Then we have the expiration time in 100 seconds. And there's another option of the EAX between them. So EAX works with the Unix timestamp. 
So that is the difference between the EX, NX and EAX. Right? So that is exactly the set and get commands of this. And if we just get the value, so if we have the get, that should be we have the product, something like that. So you can see we have the camera. But after the 100 seconds, it should be removed. If we lock the time of 10, 15 p.m. So if we just grab this value now a couple of times more. So if we see if we can still get the value. So there we go. So you can see now after 100 seconds when I try to get the product. Now this value is nil. You can see that's how the get and set works with using the Redis. It was pretty interesting topic and you can see we covered that in depth using the NX, get, EX, 100 as well. So that's how we can use the set of the Redis. And now inside the next couple of videos, we'll be learning the data structures and we'll be learning the pops up messaging, the transactions. And for these two things, we need a separate video because these two are the huge topics that we want to cover. So this needs a separate video with that. So let's move on to the second part, which is the data structures. So we just saw about the in-memory data structure and setting and getting the values with the Redis. And now let's move on to the second part with using the data structures. So data structures means we can structure some part of a data. Like mostly we use the list, right? We use the objects, we use the list, we use the, like we use the arrays for all these things, right? So Redis allows us to use some of the popular data structures like the list. So let's take the example with that. So in this, I already have, like I have defined working with the list that how we can work with the list. So let's get started. You can see my Redis container is active and now I also need to open my main Redis CLI as well. And this is also open, right? So let's get started with that. So what we need to do here, you can see how we can work with the list. Like we can use the L push. L push means left push to the list. So suppose we have the list items here, like one, two, three, four, five. We already have some data with that. L push means the new item like this, like you can see the L push, left push. This is the key, right? That is the key. And here it is the item, right? Left push means if we have the item one over there. So this item one would be added here, right? This item one would be added here like this. So that's how the list would work. And if we use the R push means the right push means this item one would be moved on to the right. So that's how it's going to work, right? So let's try to work with the list. So here we have the L push my list and suppose here we have the item one. So let's try that out. So if I again zoom in a bit, right? If I just use here something like we can have the L push something like that, we have the L push and here you can see the key key could be like that could be something around we can have the product something like that and here that could be the element the element could be suppose again we have a product of the camera let's hit enter you can see now we have the size of that list which is uh, returned which is acknowledged to us right so you can see l push of the products of the camera we can again use something like we can have the l push that could be again we can have the products that could be suppose we have something like um, we have the monitor right we have the monitor with enter and you can see now we have the size of the list which is two that's great and how we can get this list it is very very simple so we just need to use you can see now i've already defined that we need to use the range so we can just have here the l range so we'll be getting the range of the items we have the key what would be the key key in our case is the products we have the products and we have the start and the stop so start and the stops means where the index needs to be start right so where the index needs to be start it starts from zero so we can have the zero and suppose we want to stop to the one Right. So if we hit enter, you can see now the zero index has the monitor. The first index has the camera. And suppose if we add another item inside this list, 
Suppose in case we have the products and this time we are something called as speaker, something like that. Okay. So if we hit enter, you can see now we have the list item. So now we have the length of the list, which is three. That's great. Now, if I use the L range products again, we have the L range. We need to get the range of the products that could be we can have the products that could be again zero to one. Now we only be getting the speaker and the monitor, right? Because now we have just added the speaker at the start of the list and we are only getting the first and second element from that. And if we have to get all of the elements from the list, it is also very simple. We can just have like a range, something like that. Then we can again have the products like that. Then we can just start. The start could be we can have the zero. And if we want to get all of the items, we can use minus one. It means we'll be grabbing all of the items with a complete list. So if we hit enter, you can see now we have three items. And suppose we have another item. If we use the R push this time, that could be the products, something like that. We can have again, that could be, we can have new product after the camera. This would be added after the camera. That could be, suppose we have something like, uh, we have the microphone, right? If we hit enter, you can see now the list we have, we have the size of four. And if we just get the list with the L range, with starting from zero to minus one, something like that. Sorry. L, sorry, we uh, didn't provide the key. So we just need to use here the L range. We need to define, oh, I messed up with that. And if we hit enter, you can see now we have these items, the speaker, the monitor, the camera and the microphone, right? So that's how it's going to work. Right? So you can see now we have defined that. So I really messed up with that. It's okay. Then we can start again from here. It's not an issue with that, right? So you can see that is how the, uh, that's how we can work with the data structures using the Redis. And there are multiple others, which are also available with using the data structures of the Redis. There is also available, which is Z range and a lot of these things are also there. So you can see that's how we can work with the data structures. We work with the list, which is mainly used and which is very popular working with the Redis and inside the data structures, you can store like the users list, the orders list, and suppose any list item that you want to like that is frequently visited into your backend. So that's how you can work with the data structures of the Redis. Now we'll work with the fourth item, which is the pub sub messaging. So persistence, we will take a look inside the next video because it is a huge topic that we want to cover. So now we will work with the pub sub messaging. So pub sub messaging means like we can publish and we can subscribe for something. So let me restart the terminal again. Let me remove everything and let me again have like this Docker execute the Redis container with the Redis CLI. So pub sub messaging means if you just search on Google that what is the pub sub messaging. So what mainly is that we subscribe for some event, right? So if we have worked with the sockets, if you have worked with the Kafka or anything, so we subscribe for an event, right? And then we, and then whenever any event fired, we grab that value. So pub sub is similar to that. And it is mainly used with the chat applications and a lot of things as well. So pub sub messaging, and there are a lot of uh, frameworks with that. Like with the Node.js, we have the RabbitMQ. You can say it is asynchronous and scalable messaging service. So what do we have is a communication model that makes it easy for developers to build highly function and architecturally complex applications into the cloud. So that's how it works. And the main pub sub is used by the Kafka, right? We have the Kafka with that. So Apache Kafka is used for that, the pups of messaging. And again, we have the pups of for the rabbit MQ as well, which is mainly used. We have the rabbit MQ and these are all the open source as well. So it is free, but with using the Redis, so these things like 
RabbitMQ and all these things, they store the data somewhere else inside your disk and all these things. But with using the Redis pops up, it stores the data inside the memory, uh, which has also some advantages, right? Because we get the data which is frequently accessed and all these things, right? So we have the pops up implementations, we have the patterns with that and all these things. So if you want to have, like, if you want to learn more about the Redis, if you have some queries, some doubts, you can always move on to the Redis official documentation and they have very beautifully designed examples for your doubts and for your clarifications. So let's get started with that. So how the pub sub works. So if you again move on to our notes, so we have the enable persistent, which we will see like after this video, and then we have subscribe to a channel. Right. So we subscribe to a channel like you subscribe to a YouTube channel. And whenever, suppose I publish a new video, you get a notification, right? So it is very similar to that. So we subscribe to a channel. So let me get back to that. And you can see now, I think inside the windows 10, we don't have the option to clone or open a new terminal, but that's great. Now what we're going to do here. So we have to subscribe for something. We have the subscribe over there. Then we can have the channel name. Channel name could be we can have something like we can have like the chat or we can have something like any topic of the channel that could be movies, something like that. Right. Subscribe for the movies. We hit enter. You can see now you can see now we have subscribed to the movies. You can see once we subscribe for that movies, once we subscribe for a channel, then this listens to all those like whenever we publish something. So this listens for that. So it reads the messages whenever we publish something. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this terminal here and I'm going to open it another terminal over there. Let's open a new PowerShell with that, right? Let's open a new PowerShell with that. And here we can again zoom on a bit and we can make this here, right? So you can see now it is listening for all those events. Whenever we fire something, whenever we publish something. And here, if we use the Redis container again, and here I just, you can see how we can publish to something. We use the publish keyword. We have here the publish, right? We can have the movies. Then we can provide the message. The message could be, uh, we can have new movie name that could be suppose any name like my movie, something like that, right? We have the my movie and if we hit enter, you can see now, you can see now we are reading a new messages. We are, so you can see now we are reading the messages. We got the new message instantly, right? So instantly we got a new message. And again, if we use something again, we have the publish. Then we can have the movie, something like that. Then we can have new message. That could be any movie like we have the Avengers. Something like that. And you can see once we hit enter instantly, the event would be fired into this channel. So a new, a new event would be published inside this channel and we would be instantly receiving for that. You can see it is also receiving the messages. It's also listening for the new events. So once we hit enter. You can see now, you can see now we have another thing, which is we have the Avengers, right? So that's how it works. That's how it works. And you can see that's great, right? That's great. So that's how the things work with that, how we can publish something, how we can subscribe something. So mainly it is used for publishing something and we have subscribing something. Once we subscribe to a channel, then we can publish something to that channel. And this data is not persistent. Right, this data is not completely persistent. So you may see that your last message could be removed or you can see that can happen. So if we again move on, if we again suppose we have the docker execute this and here as well, we have the docker execute that. And here again, we have uh, we have something like publish. We have my channel could be movie, something like that. That could be the new message that could be suppose any movie like war, something like that. We hit enter, right? And if we again move on, we subscribe for that. The movies, you can see now, what do we have here? So we don't have anything for now. But if we again move on, if we again hit that, 
you can see now we have the war if we again move on if we have new movie that could be suppose uh, any movie like we have uh i don't know the movies anyways so that would be three idiots something like that we hit enter you can see now we have the three idiots so you can see instantly the war message was deleted right this message was deleted so you can see that's how the publishing and subscribing works we always listen to only the last message that is uh, published right the last message that is published we listen to that so you can see this message is now being lost but you can see this we have the data right the last message that this published we have this data and this also have some advantages and disadvantages so we don't have the persistent data across that but with using the Kafka, RabbitMQ, we have the persistent data as well. So there are also some disadvantages, advantages for everything. But you can see that's how the Redis works. It provides you something like pops up, which you can receive always the latest event which is occurred. Right? So that's how the pops up model works with the Redis. And now let's work with the transactions. Right? Now we'll be working with the transactions model. It is also great. So, if I ask you what is a transaction, so if you are a backend developer, you must know about the transactions. It uses like the asset properties of the database, like the atomicity main. So, it means if there are multiple operations inside a DB, suppose for example, we have the SQL DB, if there are multiple operations, it means each operation should complete. Right, we create a transaction and we just track that transaction. So if any operation fails, suppose there are 10 operations. So out of 10, suppose even if one operation or more than one operation fails, then the whole transaction would be rollback. It means no changes will be performed inside the database. Right. So transactions uses the atomicity means either complete the transaction, either make changes into everything or either discard all of the changes. So these are the transactions, right? These are the transactions. So let's work with the transactions with using the Redis as well, right? With using the Redis. So how we can start a transaction? So we can start a new transaction with using the multi and with using the exact. It means like execute this transaction and that's it, right? That's how we can use that. So suppose we want to start a transaction and this is a Redis defined function, which is increment. Suppose you can see now we can close another terminal because it is using my RAM and I won't allow anyone to use that. So if I move on and if I just write, it's okay. So now suppose we have a set we have something like counter and the value could be we have the one and after that we can also increment the counter we can have the increment something like counter you can see now the counter is two suppose increment the counter three increment the counter four and if we get the value of the counter now if we get the value of the counter you can see now the value is the four because we have incremented it three times right so that's how the increment works. These are also predefined functions, which we will cover inside our main Redis course. So you can see that's how we can use the counter and the increment functions. And you can see we have the multi something like that to start a transaction. Suppose we use here the multi something like that. And if we hit enter, you can see now we have something called as TX, which is a transaction. So now we have to perform everything within this transaction. Unless we add the execute, it means it will execute the transaction. And suppose now the counter value is four. Suppose we just increment the counter value. Suppose to, again, we have the counter. You can see queued, it will queue that operation. And again, if we use the increment of the counter, it will again queue that operation. And again, if we hit counter, it will queue that operation. So you can see at this step, the counter value was four, right? And again, you can see if we have used the transaction, with the multi, it means execute the multiple statements with atomicity. Now we have the increment counter, increment counter, increment the counter. And if I now 
just remove that and if i use the execute for now we have the execute it means it will execute that operation and if we hit enter you can see once we hit enter you can see now all of the operations will be performed which are one queued so all the queued operations would be performed and if we get the value of the counter now suppose we have the get of the counter if we hit enter you can see now first this operation was completed then this operation then this operation and the final value is 7 so that's how we can work with the redis and you can see that's how you can see the redis stores all of the data that's how we can process a transaction within a redis so now we have covered the basic usages of the redis as well and now the main usages are with the persistence as well persistence means if you want to persist the data if we don't want our data to be lost, we can use the persistent approach. These are used with the volumes and there are a lot of configurations with that. And there's clustering and high availability as well. Clustering means it is similar to Node.js cluster. So we can utilize multiple cores of our system. If we have multiple core system, right? If we have multi-core system, suppose we have four cores, six cores, eight cores, we can utilize the Redis at multiple cores of our system. So that is the clustering and high availability. So these are the usages and now we have performed each usages of the Redis and that's how the Redis works and that was all for the Redis crash course. Right, that was all for the Redis crash course and now we'll be seeing the Redis implementation with using the Node.js. So we don't want to end the video here but we'll be using the Redis implementation with the Node.js itself as well. It will be great because now we'll be using the JSON data with the Redis. We won't be using the list anymore. We'll be using the JSON data with the Redis and that will be like the real world scenarios that how the Redis works. So excited for that. Yes, I am excited. So you must be also excited with that because you are learning something new as a backend developer. So let's get started with the Node.js as well. So hey everyone and let's get back to the redis. Now we have pretty good understanding of the redis, right? So first we discussed that why exactly do we need the redis. Then we learned that what exactly is a redis. Then we saw a couple of use cases of the redis as well and we implemented a couple of them, right? Then we created some Docker containers. We interacted with the Redis using the Redis CLI application. And then we just performed a couple of things like we performed the set operations, get operations. Now we learned in depth about the set and get. Now we also learned about like how we can have the channels, how we can have the expiration times for the keys and how we can just move on and we can perform the increment functions, the transactions. Now we have solid understanding to get started with the redis and to work with the redis so mainly we cannot directly work with only the cli tool and yes cli tool is very important for learning the redis but we don't always interact with the cli tool so we use a programming language for that suppose we create the backend on a python application so we need to connect to the redis to get the values from them and in case of our project as well. So earlier we created the Node.js API with using the express MySQL. So now in that project, we'll be using the Redis inside the Docker container. So now we are just creating a microservices type application because we have the SQL, we, uh, we have the SQL database inside the Docker, we have the Redis inside the Docker. And then you can see now we'll be creating the Node.js with the Redis. So, Let's get started with the Node.js as well. So now we'll be just interacting with the Redis using the Node.js. Right, let's get started. So let's move on to the Visual Studio Code. And here what I have, you can see here, I have created this file. But you can see I created this file to show you that why exactly do we need the Redis. But here I'm going to explain you each and everything with that. I'm going to explain you each line which I wrote. So first let's move on to package.json. So here what I have, so inside the dependencies, I have the dependencies of the Redis. So we need this, like this Redis package is available on NPM. You can move on to Google and you can find that there. 
you can move on you can move on to npm registry and you can find that there you can move on to npm have the redis something like that or you can just mainly do npm install redis and that's it you can see the amount of weekly downloads that's huge then what we're gonna do then you also need to install the redis json it's not necessary so we have interacted with the redis using the redis stack so that is mainly not required but in some cases it is required so i would like i would suggest you to keep that in your dependencies with that and you can see that's it so it is pretty similar application we didn't do any changes inside the main handlers and all these things then we moved on we created a new file which is a redis.js so in there we imported something which is a create client so create client creates a new client right create client creates a new redis client and by default settings so by default the redis runs on the port of 6379 so it have the by default option selected if we use the create client now we imported the create client then we have let client equals to this right because this client will be used by this function as well by this function as well and by this function as well and in future there can be more functions using this client so we just have the initialize the redis client so if the client is not already initialized then only we have the client equals to create client right so if we don't have the client and then only we want to create client because we don't want to perform multiple client multiple connections to the redis whenever someone uh, whenever any client makes a request to our server then we are catching some error like if you are getting an error in that that is an event we listen so on error then we'll be just logging that error over there right error creating redis client that should be client sorry right so we are listening for that and that's it so whenever suppose any docker container stopped or there's or there's mismatch with anything so we'll be receiving that connection error with that it will be continuously listening for that error then we are having the try catch block inside that we are having the client dot connect with using the default options and there if we get an error then we lock and we print the error message then we throw that error very basic function that is right very basic function now we have defined a get value something we are having the get value so here we are working with the json data and it is very important so if we are working with the json data first we need the redis package which includes the rejson module which includes the rejson module here you can verify that it is the rejson module we need to use which includes this module right so that's why we can work with the json so we just need to perform the client dot json then we can have the set or we can have the get this functions are similar so here we have the const value equals to await client dot json dot get so here what are we doing inside this string this is very important so this is the location where our data is being stored right so we just provided the location at that point where the data is being stored so if we use the user slash we have the key it means now we are having the location at the root at the root level of our application right at the root level then we can have the user location then we can have the keys for the user and that's it that could be the id of that user or anything with that so that is the exact location with that and here you can see we are having the client dot json dot get we have the user then we have the key and it stores the ids of the user with that the key is the id of the user then if we have the error so then if we have the data then we send the data we do not check anything with that then we are grabbing the error then we have the log message error occurred while getting the value for the key and that is the key and we are throwing that error very simple so this function is also clear now let's move on to the set value as well that is the last function which i created and this also works same so here we have the const data equals to await client dot json dot set so we use the set method over there we use the set method over there and in there we have the key value pairs which we will be getting so here inside that we again have the user location then we have the key and this means the path right 
this dollar sign means the path and this dollar means we are having we need to get the data from the root directory so with this sign we tell the redis that get the data from the root directory which defines the path so we have the user we have the exact location of the key then we have the key then we have at the root directory then you can see then we are setting the value and that's it right that's it that the cons data equals to wait client.json.set with that and then we are returning the acknowledgement from the redis that's it then if we are getting the error then again we are logging the error message error record while setting the value for this key throw error and that's it for this file that was very simple file i made it very simple for you right so now i hope that's clear for everyone now you can see we are exporting these things like initialize the redis client get the value set a value and again so i forgot to mention that so if you don't have the access to this project i'll be giving you the access to this project inside the github repository you do not need to worry about that because i'm using the project of my previous video right so that is a continuation on the previous video not exactly the continuation but expansion or extending something like adding a new functionality to that project right then we have the index.js so here instead of directly just connecting to database and then opening the application server now we have the initialize the complete application so here we are initializing the complete application with the init app that is the async corporation here we have the await connect to database so first we are connecting to the mysql database over there and that is the operations which we did inside our earlier video inside the last video of this topic then we have the await init redis client then we are just initializing the redis client over there very simple then after the init application after the init app then we are just listening for the application server and that's it the port is defined here which is 5000 right that's how we can work and if we get any error we are exiting the node process before logging after logging the error then where we have used these functions of the redis that is very simple so we moved on to handlers and here we have the index.js so here you can see we have the get all products with that so i haven't used with the get all products so you can use that here as well right you can have the key that should be all you can have all of the products over there and it would be very simple and easy to get right then we have the const value equals to await get value of that particular id then we have the console.log so you can see here what are we doing inside the get product so we are having the cache functionality inside that right we are having the cache we can have something like we can have the log like we can have we do not need to provide anything over there we can just have the users redis cache something like that we are having the using the redis cache so here what are we doing so we are grabbing the request.params.id from that and we are having the value first we are trying to get the value if it is available in the redis so that is our approach so if the value is available for this key inside the redis then we log that value over there like the value exists in the redis memory then we return the status for that then we return the response like we already have the value of this product which is the product and we have the value and then we find after this if check what are we doing so we are just having the normal conditions like that we have the const product equals to await find by id if we don't have the value inside the redis then we are grabbing the product from the database then after we grab the product then again we cache this value using this right we cache this value right very simple with that very simple operation with that and after that we are having this value and then again we are having the return message like return response dot status json then we are having the product itself which we are grabbing from the database right so that was pretty easy function right that was pretty easy function we made very few optimizations but these optimizations work way fast right so you will be having more than 70 to 80 percent performance increase with using the cached values instead of every time connecting to database grabbing the response and sometimes database can have multiple operations pending so right 
So now you got the point that why exactly do we need the redis? So very simple with that, we just made it very clear inside this function. So any developer can now understand this function. And now let's move on. Let's see again how we can use that. Our application server is already open. Uh, let me move on to Postman. Let's again test this application. So let's get back. So you can see here, if I will grab the product with the ID equals to five, right? If the product ID is equals to five, if we hit on send. So first time we will be getting the value from the database, right? First time we'll be getting the value from the database, right? Like this. First time we'll be having it here. The product equals to we have the find by ID. We have the await set value. We are, uh, will set the value. Then we return the response. So you can see now we hit it on send. Now the time was actually 30 milliseconds, right? It was 30 milliseconds. It took around 30 milliseconds. But now if we send it again, you can see now it will just take around 10 milliseconds, right? It just takes around 10 milliseconds and that's huge performance increase, right? That's huge performance increase. So here we are grabbing the value as well. Here we have the value exist inside the Redis memory, ID5, title Tesla car, description and all these details. And another thing that I want to show you. So the more log statements you add, the more time it takes. So if you remove that and if you again restart this server again, so now you can see every time you hit on the send again, you can see the memory was lost again. If we hit on send, you can see now it took around 12 milliseconds. And if we hit on send, you can see now it took around four milliseconds again. If we hit on send, you can see the average was six and nine milliseconds earlier. Now it is just four milliseconds. And if we grab the product with the value, with the ID of the two, then you can see if we hit on send, it took around 15 milliseconds over there. But you can see now if we again hit on send, it took around five milliseconds, right? You can see that's huge, right? That's huge around four milliseconds. So you can see the average is around four, five, four, something like that. So you can see that's how you can increase the performance of your application. That's huge. You can see working with the Redis, right? So that's it for this project. You can see uh, we learned a lot of new things with the backend development using the Redis as a cache system and it is majorly used by any senior developer. So you can see if you want to become a senior developer, if you are already a senior developer as well, if you just know or if you have to refresh the Redis, then this video is perfectly fine for you. Now you got the exact point that where the Redis can be much utilized be uh, in a better way and how to work with the Node.js, right? That's it for this video. So now we learned about the Redis, right? Now we learned about the why exactly do we need the Redis. We saw the examples of the Redis, right? We saw the examples of using the Redis for an Amazon type uh, application, right? We uh, now we learned that why exactly do we need the Redis for the caching, for the sessions, for the pups of messaging. And then we learned that how to connect the Redis, like the Docker image using the Redis official website for downloading the Redis if you want. And for the Node.js, you can just use the npm install, the Redis and the Redis JSON. And then we saw the usages, the couple of usages of the Redis as well. And I will make sure that I will cover the persistent and clustering high availability as well inside this YouTube channel. So I'll be posting the videos about them later. But you can see these are the major use cases of working with the Redis. And these are very popular working with that. So that's it for this video and that's it for the Redis and I hope you learned something new with this video. So if you learned something new, you can please like the video because it takes us a lot of time building these videos, creating the content, editing and all this stuff, right? So I would request you to please subscribe to our channel so that we can continuously post on our channel. It gives us a lot of motivation to work continuously for the people like you. So. That's it for now and I hope you best of luck for your future and that's it for this video, right? And thank you.